Hi everyone, today I'll be reviewing R31 Eta Beta from Mastermind Creations reformatted line. Now this guy is also known as um, IDW's Deadlock and he will be recolored into Mastermind Creations Stray, also known as Drift. And I believe Drift is going to be the more popular and more uh, sought after transformer after this guy. Eta Beta should give us a good indication of size, articulation, and transformation for the, the upcoming uh, Stray or Drift. Now, as part of this review, I will also be comparing with G Creations Rebel, also their IDW Prowl, which will be uh, recolored into an Earth version of uh, Drift uh, in the near future. So let's go ahead and have a look at his box art. This is the front. On the sides, you see his close-up of his face, and on the back, pictures of his front and sides and his vehicle mode. So let's get him out of the box. Out of the box, he comes with, of course, the Transformer, his usual comic and instructions booklet, trading card, and as well as his gun and sword accessories. So a closer look at his trading card, some nice artwork on the front, ratings on the back, and as for his booklet, we get some comics, which you see uh, he meets Wing and Lockdown. On the other side, they show you instructions to transform him into robot mode, as well as some interesting concept art for the unused designs for Wing and Drift uh, that MMC previously showed at conventions. Now this being the first release of, we get an extra translucent red gun, which is the exact same mold as his regular gun. So it looks pretty good. There's some painted details on the regular gun. And closer look at the sword, you, you can see that it's a very nice dark chrome blade to match with the colors uh, on of Eta Beta or Deadlock, as well as some painted uh, details over here on the on the hilt. Let's take a look at him in vehicle mode. And here he is in vehicle mode. It's a very clean and neat um, vehicle mode. It looks like a futuristic car. And let's have a look at some of his paint detailing. You can see that uh, he's mostly molded in a, a dark bluish purple plastic and he's got paint details here, 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 all the greys and the um, mustards I think and he's got a nice transparent red canopy so it looks like a very nice futuristic car. Uh, these are the side detailing. On the back he's got some thrusters and he actually has wheels on the bottom so this is how he rolls pretty okay also on the bottom he cleans up pretty nicely you can still see his robot head over here and you can also fit his gun on his um, car mode so there's a square a hole over here. So what's inter interesting is that MMC have now gone for some square uh, peg at the bottom of his gun handle and you just peg it like this. It's a good firm fit, stays in there. You can also store his swords on the, the underside of his car mode like so. Slanging it in this way and looking for the tabs so I'll, I'll repeat it again, the tabs over here, you just slide it in and then tab it to the holes in the sword. And he should still roll along nicely. So here's some size comparisons in vehicle mode. Here he is with MMC's Comatus, better known as Turmoil, his, in his, from his Decepticon days. And here he is with MMC's Kaltur, also known as Tarn, and here's MMC's Calidus or Rodimus, 
his best friend in the Lost Light comics. And now with G Creations Rebel, or IDW Prowl, which will be recolored into an Earth version of Drift. And you can, you can see that they're actually a comparable size in vehicle mode. And here he is with a Masterpiece Carbot, and you can clearly see that he is much bigger in size. Let's go ahead and get him transformed. You untap him over here at the front, then untap the feet from the back over here, here. And then rotate this forward. Then now to the underside of the car mode, you swing his wheels in. And then untap his legs from the front, the top of the car. Straighten his legs out. You rotate his knee pads up. Now we go to his feet. And bend this part up so he has a heel spur. And bring the this part up as well. So we do the same for the other side. So we do the same for the other side. Now onto the front of his car mode again. Lift this part off, removing the taps from here and here. Now you want to swing his arms out now, like so. And rotate them forward. And you bring his arms out from the bottom. Turn them forward, do the same for the other side. Now at the back over here, you gotta turn his wheels until you see that there's a hinge over here and then you bend them inward like so. So he has a sleek um, side profile of his arm. Same over here on this side. Now you lift up his canopy and split the front of his car to the sides. These will become the scabbards for his swords, the sheaths for his swords. And you want to rotate now his waist around. Now back to the top over here, pull these grey tabs out, now you want to lift his shoulders a little bit and I'll show you why, uh, pull the front uh, chest cover forward, rotate his head out, close the front chest cover and now on his back you see you need to have his shoulders raised up a little bit so you can tap the back panel in there's a peg over here and yeah close these flaps just under his arms and this is him in robot mode you can put the swords in to the, the sheets
And he holds his guns pretty well. You can also have him hold his swords. Like so. Now a closer look at his pain detailing, you can see that he has paint on his head, his eyes, on his face. Uh, as well as a lot of red on the rest of his body that really brings out the nice details. This is all paint as well. Over here on the arms, the white paint over here. And onto his legs, you can see more red detailing very nicely painted. Now I have to point out something that really bugs me. So if you see his face sculpt, um, he, he has a completely white helmet, which is actually different from the way Deadlock looks in the comics, which is what you see over here on the package. He's got like some dark eyebrows going on his helmet. So I don't know what MMC decided to do differently, but the final product just does not have that. Now for articulation, he has a ball jointed head. It can go left and right, look down that far and look up that far, not much. He's got a hinge over here at the shoulder and a ball joint as well. He has another hinge over here for his transformation that you can choose to articulate if you want. A, a bicep swivel double jointed elbows that can go all the way up. He's got a swivel at oh no not a swivel, he's got a ball jointed wrist that wiggles about that much. He's got fingers on a hinge an individually articulated trigger finger and the rest are just together molded together. Now he's got a, a waist swivel and if you notice that um, the back canopy over here forms a flap, but once you swivel him at the waist, it does not uh, interfere at all. So that's actually very good engineering. And his scabbards uh, swing forward and backward, and they are also on a ball joint. He's got some hip flaps over here that you can move out of the way to articulate him at his legs so um, yeah he's got universal legs that go forward and backward that much the joints are very tight which is pretty good quality and he can do splits that far he has a thigh swivel and a double jointed knee that goes all the way back like so and he's got a ball double ball ankles sort of because there's a ball here and a ball here on the foot which is pretty tight his wheels tend to, on the side of his arm, tend to roll out every once in a while, like so. But um, I don't know how I can tab it in more, more firmly. It doesn't really bug me, but you know, it's just, that's just something to take note of. For some size comparisons, here he is with a standard Hasbro Voyager Springer and with Masterpiece Lambor. And here he is with IDW Turmoil. They're about almost the same height with IDW Tarn who towers over him as well as Rodimus who's slightly taller than him 
And here he is with G Creations Rebel, otherwise known as IDW Prowl. Now we know that G Creations is going to remold or recolor this guy into an Earth version of Drift. Now for me, um, Ada Beta over here has good quality of plastic, solid engineering, and a simple but very fun transformation. This guy over here. He's got a good heft to him because he's got die cast over here on his legs. Um, his engineering is slightly overcomplicated, and the transformation could get quite frustrating for some. Now, I hope this comparison now gives will help you make a decision which drift you want. But for me, in my opinion, I think they are complementary to each other. I am happy to have, you know, IDW versions of both characters and, and that really works for my collection. Now some final thoughts on this guy. I think the paint, the engineering, the quality of the materials, um, the accessories are all of a very high standard that we have come to expect of Mastermind creations. And I will say that I'm a big fan of, of their product and, and, I, and I do look forward to their new stuff that's coming out. The only thing that really bugs me about uh, Adabeta is the lack of paint on his eyebrows over here, as you can see, compared to the packaging art and, and the comic book look. If you like what you see, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching this review.